beautiful day. It's a good sign of uh, spring, right? You can see the sunshine and, and, and the snow is melting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today again in this wonderful, wonderful Sunday celebration. Uh, before I pray, I just want to ask you a question. When you come to church, do you expect that God is here? Of course, right? Yes, when we come to church, okay, we have the expectation that we will encounter God in a very special way. Though God is everywhere, but when we come to church, our expectation is so much more that we will experience God. We will, uh, we will uh, hear God. We will see God to each and every one of us. Because we, we carry the presence of God each day. So when we come together, of course, uh, we are expecting to experience Him in a very special way. You know, uh, in the book of Exodus, where in, uh, you know, this the story of Israel being stiff-necked. You know, stiff-necked, they are disobedient to God, they've been, uh, uh, they've been uh, uh, not obeying what God wants them to do. In spite of God's faithfulness, they is still uh, like on and off, on and off with their relationship with God, in the, uh, with, the, with how they treated God as their Jehovah. And Exodus 33, it tells us that uh, God instructed Moses to go, to go and occupy the, uh, occupy the, proceed to the promised land, but he said this, but I will not go with you. If I go with you, you will all be consumed because of you, your sinfulness, your disobedience against me. Just imagine that, that being God's people and God said, I will not go with you when you go there. I will not go. So in the same thing that when, when we come to church, right away you know that God's presence is, is not here. What's the point of coming to church, right? What's the point of gathering together at God's people when the presence of God is not here? But praise be to God, when we come together, Sunday after Sunday, we experience the presence of God. We experience His power, we experience His presence, we experience His anointing. And that's the point of coming together as a family because we can come together, we can come together to worship God. We can come together to experience God in a very powerful way. We're not wasting time, folks. We are here and our coming together is all is worthwhile because, as I've said, we will experience the power of God. Amen? In every gathering, even if you're doing a Bible study or, or care group, anything, we experience the power of God. Otherwise, if God's presence is not there, don't waste, I will not be wasting my time. You should not be wasting your time. So today, God is present. God is here, amen? God is here. And He will speak to us powerfully. He will speak to us through His Word. And let's expect, let's expect that God will, will touch our lives. Let ex, let's expect that God will minister to us this morning through singing, through His words, and through fellowshipping. Amen? So why don't we stand and just pray together. Father God, Lord, thank you that each day we got it together, you are always there. You are always present. You are always um, um, here with us, O God, Lord Jesus, O God, Lord. And that's the, the purpose of gathering, O God, Lord Jesus, O God. To encourage this other God, and most of all, be encouraged that you are with us, O God, Lord Jesus. Thank you for today, Lord. That's uh, Sunday. This is Sunday again, Lord, the Lord's Day. We come to you with thanksgiving at the center with expectation that you will minister to, to us through your words, so that even our singing, God, Lord, we will be ministering to each other, God, as we minister to you through our songs, oh God, and clapping and playing the instruments, oh God, Lord. 
This is all about you, God, Lord. That's why, Lord, we come to you now with the confidence that the Holy Spirit be, will be with us, oh God, Lord. Holy Spirit, take control of this gathering. Holy Spirit, take control of our worship as our young people will be leading us in worship, oh God, Lord. I pray, we pray, oh God, that Lord, Holy Spirit, oh God, Lord, will take control of their voices, will take control of their hearts as well, oh God, will take control of their minds, oh God, Lord, Jesus, oh God, Lord. After all, oh God, uh, our gathering is for you, and this is all about you. Therefore, we commit to you this morning, oh God, Lord. Holy Spirit, take control now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Let's uh, proceed with our announcement uh, uh, this morning. Uh, another busy week, praise God. And it begins on midweek service on Wednesday, February 15th already. Uh, halfway through the month. But praise be to God and uh, our exhorter for midweek is Sister Melody Ramos. And again, uh, if you're free and uh, and uh, if you have time to join us, please join us and experience the power of God during sun, uh, mid midweek celebration. And if you have prayer requests, please let us know. Send us your prayer items. Send us your, your requests and that uh, you will, uh, you will be blessed and we, we will definitely include your prayer items uh, to our list. Okay, uh, as you have heard me uh, say last Sunday, we, we are now opening uh, this sponsorship program for music. If you or your children are interested in uh, enrolling to a music ministry, music lesson, and Decide, if you decide to be part of the uh, worship team, then you you be qualified. If you would just uh, let us know, and uh, I haven't sent the, the criteria yet, but I will do sometime this week. But even uh, even today, if you're interested, please approach Daniel or any of the leader, and we will definitely entertain you and help you out of how you can do that. Okay. Okay, this is an early announcement for April 30th, Sunday, after the service we will have an AGM uh, annual general meeting or annual congregational meeting. So as I've said, if you consider this church as your family, home church, home church, then you, I would like to ask that you stay and, and just um, hear out what we have to tell you and report to you about the church. Okay? And also, uh, because uh, it will be a little bit uh, longer than usual, so we will have uh, pizza lands. So we will have uh, fellowship after that. For next Sunday, for Brother 19 service uh, assignments, uh, worship leader will be our brother Ben Pularan, and uh, opening prayer will be Brother King, and word will be delivered by our dear Pastor Mike Orteza. And refreshment will be taken care of by Alisso the Andreano family. So please invite your friends next Sunday and let's come together in the celebration of God's goodness. What else do we have? Again, we always um, express our appreciation to all of you who sacrificially give to the worship of God through the Christian Fellowship. Through your giving, we are able to, to minister to people. Uh, in the Philippines and locally, and uh, through your faithful giving, we are able to support these ministries. Thank you, and uh, continue to do so as you are being led. And of course, you're, you're, there are three ways of do, do, doing that, by tightly, which is the most common one, or write a check where they drop box at the usher's table. That's no more. So again, after the service, our young kids will proceed to their Sunday school room. And again, let's just pray together. Father God, Lord, thank you once again for your faithfulness in providing all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Indeed, Lord, you never miss in providing for our needs of God, Lord, whether it's physically, materially, or financially, and most of all, spiritually. And Lord, we want to participate in what you do, God, through the other Christian fellowship to our giving. And as we give, maybe for the furtherance only of your kingdom of God, Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon Diyos, O God, Lord. And even our Sunday school, as they proceed to their room, we ask you to be with them and to the teachers and volunteers, O God, Lord. And Lord, we give you all the glory and lead us now as we worship you, O God, through 
the leadership of our young people, Kyla and Janelle of God, Lord, and Kami of God, Lord, and Kame as well of God, Lord. Thank you. We give you all glory, honor, praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's welcome our uh, worship team. Good morning. So, um, wow, it's really bright and cold outside. But anyways, um, how are we all today? Good. Okay. Uh, can we stand up for worship, please?
doesn't work in person things. Oh, I got 99% already. That's good enough for me. No. He wants all of us to come into the knowledge of His grace. He wants set up until that one soul gets to know Him. He will do anything and everything in His power to reach out to that one soul. That's the overwhelming love of God. His grace is for everybody. His love is for all. But for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And those, and those that will believe in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. He's not willing that anyone should perish, but everyone comes to the knowledge of His grace. That's who God is. That's who God is. And I don't know about you, but just knowing that, I like to shout in the praises of His name and His goodness, His grace and mercy. All the overwhelming love of God. He sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross of Calvary. And you and I can be saved. And because of what He has done, you and I will no longer suffer the consequence of our sin. You and I will be spared of hell. The Bible tells us that for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, none, none, none come even close to the glory of God. We are all sinners in His sight. But through His Son, Jesus Christ, they can come to God and be forgiven, be accepted. Folks, today, Let's acknowledge that. Let's acknowledge the grace and mercy of the Lord. Let's acknowledge His faithfulness. Let's acknowledge everything that He has done. And His word praising. His word glorifying. All the overwhelming love of God is here today to embrace you. Church of Brampton, si Kuya Efren, saka si Ate Ophelia. 
Okay, you come. Welcome, Paul. Welcome. Do we have any other, of course, Zoe, Garley, and, and Gilbert, and Chloe? They are there. As uh, our children will go to the Sunday school, just um, settle in, find your uh, most comfortable seat. Before I begin, let me just uh, share to you a couple of icebreakers. I know the ice is already melting, but let's just break the ice this morning. Okay? You okay? Is that, is that okay with you? Amen. Well, husband and wife are talking, and husband told his wife, When I get mad at you, you never fight back. When I get mad, you never fight. How do you control your anger? Wife said, I just go to the washroom and clean the toilet. And husband said, how does it help? Wife said, I use a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. There's a violinist. He's a violin. He was arrested while having this uncontrollable anger in his own home. And the police said to him, you are under arrest for domestic violence. <laughs> you have to laugh, it's funny. <laughs> well, friends, we're getting deeper and deeper into our, our series um, of the preaching of the mount um, by our Lord Jesus Christ. And I could almost picture in my mind the faces of the people of, in the audience as Jesus goes deeper with the sermon. Of course, to some maybe there's some excitement, excitement building up. The excitement is building up as Jesus Christ goes deeper into his message. To some, also, at the same time, there's some minds are started to wander around as the teaching also gets deeper. They become disinterested in what Jesus was teaching. Just like in many churches today, not all are listening to the preacher. Some have their ears attentive to the preacher, while some have their ears glued to the gadget, listening to something else. Out. So today, we are continuing our study on the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus had just finished telling us in verses, this is Matthew 5, verses 7 to 20 last week, that we must live a life in perfection. Live a life in perfection, all ultra-righteous according to Sister Tess in her email. That is in order for us to get into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' requirement is perfection. And because of that, it points us to our greater need for Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Ibig sabihin po, kinakailangan natin na tanggapin natin si Jesus sapagat siya lamang ang perfect. He's the only one who fulfilled the law. Jesus is perfect and He fulfills the law that through Him, we are also able 
to be obedient to the law. So Jesus began, began a series of statements that begins with this. He said, But I say to you, Pero ito ang sinasabi ko sa inyo. Ito ang nakasulat sa kutusan, pero ito naman sinasabi ko sa inyo. Okay? Uh, you have heard that it was said, but he counters with this, but I say to you. So, in the next few weeks, we will be seeing a lot of this as we continue with the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard what that it was said, but I say to you. Yung po ang pasisimula ni Jesus to sa ating pag-aaralan sa, sa araw nito. So, in continuation of what I preached last week, in today's passage, Jesus is acknowledging the validity of the law. Okay? And the importance of teaching it. And then He is adding deeper thoughts about the commandments. Or clarifying it. Or explaining what was really at the heart of it. So again, Jesus in essence is not abolishing the law. He is fulfilling it it himself and explaining the law in its deeper sense. Folks, Jesus is simply saying that it needs to be obeyed and not to be ignored. So, would you please stand with me as we read our passage today from Matthew 5, 21 to 26. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. Matthew 5, 21 to 26. It's on the screen. You have heard that it was said to those of all, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gifts to the altar, and there remember that your brother is something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go with your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer, and you'll be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will be by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, thank you for your word. Your word is holy and pure. And as we study it, oh God, we need your Holy Spirit to illuminate it, oh God, because uh, we won't understand it without you helping us to understand it, oh God. It's from your word. It's your word and from your mouth, oh God. Therefore, we come to you now with the confidence as we study it, you will clarify it, you will illuminate it, that all of us, the listener, will hear what you have to say to us today from your word. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So in this passage, as you have seen it, Jesus speaks to us about murder. He mentioned about murder, raka, or insult, and anger. Therefore, I entitled my preaching as this. Anger management. Anger management. What is anger management? What is anger management, by the way? Anger management is a psychological procedure with the aim of reducing both the emotional feelings and the physiological arousal that anger causes. In short, the goal is to control anger before anger controls a person. That's what anger management is. The goal is to control anger before the anger controls a person. So I will be sharing to you three points in today's preaching. Namely, the root of anger. We will also be talking about the result of anger. And also, lastly, the remedy to anger. The root of anger, the result of anger, and the remedy to anger. So let's move on. Point number one is the root of anger. Jesus says in verse 21, 22, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. 
But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. What is anger? Ano ba yung galit? Ano ba yung galit? Anger is a strong feeling of displeasure. Any one of you got angry before? If you don't raise your hand, I'll get angry. Lahat po tayo nagagalit. Other words for anger is fury. Wow. Hatred. Oh man. Rage. Indignation. Ito po sa Tagalog. Anger is pagkamuhi o sobrang galit. Pagkamuhi. And there was no doubt among the crowd, the disciples who were present, that murder is evil. According to Jesus, murder is evil. The audience were, remember, the audience were predominantly Jews. Jewish. So they were aware of the sixth commandment of God that he gave to Moses, telling them, Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. So, let me ask you this question. Does anyone among you here will disagree that murder is not evil? Is evil. Of course, all of us agree that murder is evil. That's evil. Taking somebody's, somebody else's life is against God, against the law of man, against the law of, man, of God. But, Here's what Jesus has to say. Here's what Jesus has to say. The law says murder is a sin and it is evil, but hear what I say. H-E-A-R. Hear what I have to say. That even e getting angry is evil and subject to judgment. Kahit daw po ang pagkagalit ay pwedeng maging kasalanan, at ito ay sanhi ng judgment. A murderer will be judged according to the law, but according to Jesus, being angry to someone is equally, equally deserving of judgment. And hearing this, of course, the listener, the audience, were shocked to hear, to hear this. And I'm sure most of us here were also shocked hearing this as well. We might say, Maybe Jesus is taking this a little too far, isn't he? That's too much. Let me ask you to hold that thought for a moment and see what Jesus continued to say. Jesus, continue. Jesus further says, And whoever says to this brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. What is Raka? Raka comes from a Aramaic term, Reka, R-E-Q-A, which means scoundrel or fool or empty head. It is a derogatory expression insinuating a person's stupidity or inferiority. Raka in our language today is the same as cuss words, cussing word or pag-alipusta or pagmumura sa kapwa. We are living in a world where derogatory language becomes part of a normal conversation, even sadly among the believers. People are no longer offended much by it as they used to. Cussing, cursing, and name calling meant nothing much these days. When someone is cussing or name calling, people see it as a way of just forcing around between friends. Nagbibiroon lang po sila. Okay lang yan, nagbibiroon lang yung mga yan. They didn't mean it. Words like, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're crazy, or you're lunatic. And many more derogatory words are just common on a daily conversation people speak to each other. But Jesus said something about this type of conversation with this, that not only anger is deserving of judgment, but also Jesus also said, insulting someone is also of the same degree. There's no difference to Jesus. And going even further, calling someone a fool is the serving of hellfire. Wow. Hellfire. Sobra naman po yung pastor. Nasa na yung grasya ng Panginoon. What is hellfire? By the way, 
What is hellfire? Hellfire is from the Greek word Gehina, which referred to trust dump site outside of Jerusalem that was continually burning. I don't want to sugarcoat it. It simply means hell. Fire and hell. So Jesus is saying that a person who gives themselves to anger and insult, insulting is deserving of judgment in hell. That's what this word says. Trust talking belongs to trust. Isn't it? That needs to be burned. Mga kapatid, Jesus is not overreacting or overdoing things. Jesus is just pointing out the very root of it all. Was it too harsh of a penalty? We might think. We will find out. But in spite of what he's saying, we see God's grace in action. In spite of this, we see God's grace in action. That the truth is, Jesus was clarifying the law and explaining it deeper, and it is a work of His grace as far as I am concerned. This is the grace of God in action. Jesus is pointing out to his hearer how murder can begin and where it actually has rooted out of. Saan ba talaga galing ang pinagmulan ng murder? That the very act of murder finds its root in an angry and murderous spirit. Jesus' goal was to point us deeper to the root of anger and murder. And he also present to us the remedy to avoid judgment in hell. Listen. The root of anger, the, the root of murder is anger. And the root of anger is from a heart that is not right before God. Can I say, can I have a witness? The root of murder is anger, and the root of anger is from a heart that's not right before God. Murder begins in the heart, according to Jesus Christ, if you read between the lines. And calling someone Raka are signs that there is hatred building up in the heart of that person. Here it is. The hatred that causes one person to insult someone is the same hatred that causes the same person to commit murder. Ibig sabihin po, iisa lamang po ang pinaghuhugutan. If you have anger, okay, then you, if that anger causes you to murder is from the same root. Iisa po ang pinaghuhugutan. Mga kapatid, the wrong attitude of the heart can result initially in anger and insult. And if remain unchecked, it can lead to murder that makes a person morally guilty before God. Amen? Matthew 15, 19 tells us, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, Adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. Mula daw po sa puso, nagmumula ang lahat ng masama. Murder, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. That means, folks, a heart that is not right before God is deserving of fire in hell. Again, this is not my word, but the word of the Lord. Now, how do we, how do we solve the heart issue of a man? Remember last week the vernacular I showed you? How do we solve the issue of the heart of a man, of the issue of heart for a man? Remember there were two kinds of crowds in the Sermon of the Mount. They have the crowd and the disciples. The crowd could, could be the unbelievers, okay? And the disciples were the believers. So. How do we solve the heart issue of a man? To the crowd, go to God for a heart transplant. Go to God for a heart transplant. I told you also the last time that Jesus Christ 
is a, the greatest heart surgeon, the greatest cardiologist. If you, you belong to the crowd today, I'm telling you, you need a heart transplant because according to Jeremiah 17, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But God's promise for you, as God promised to Ezekiel 36, 26, when you go to him in surrender is this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. That's what took place in the operating room where Jesus was the, the, the surgeon and you are the patient for a heart transplant. Now let's focus our vernacular to the disciples. Okay? To the disciples, how to correct the issue of the heart? Guard your heart before the Lord. For this is of utmost importance. Sa mga mananampalatay po, bantayin daw po natin ang ating puso sapagkat ito yung pinaka-importante sa lahat. Why? Because we already have a pure heart through Jesus Christ. But it doesn't mean that a heart cannot be contaminated with any impurities. Marami pong impurities sa ating kapaligiran. Sa mundong ginagalawa po natin, marami po tayong pwedeng masagap na impurities that will, that will contaminate our hearts. And that's why the writer of Proverbs wrote these reminders. In Proverbs 4, 23, it says, Guard your heart for everything do flows from it. Bantayal daw natin ating puso sapagat dito rin nagbubula ang lahat ng bagay. Proverbs 23-26 My son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. Ipagkatiwala daw natin ang ating puso sa Panginoong Yesus. Pagka, pag ang Panginoong po ay siya ang naghahari sa ating puso, then it flows all the good things from that heart. Friends, remember this. Just as murder is sinful because it is a physical violation of someone, someone created in the image of God, so also insult is sinful because it is a verbal violation of someone created in the image of God. In the eyes of God, physical violation or murder and verbal violation or anger towards another person are both sinful. Amen? Let's go to point number two. The result of anger. Verse 25, agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge hand you over to officer and you be thrown into prison. As sure as I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Ano po kasi nasabi ni Jesus Christ dito sa verses na ito? What Jesus is pointing out in this verse is that it is always better to work things out with someone without with someone without going before the judge. Ayusin na raw po natin before ito ay humantong sa usgado. Whether it is a human judge or God as the holy judge. Because we all know that going to court against someone is ugly, messy, and expensive. You don't want to go through that. See, what could happen is this. What could happen is a judge will examine us to see if there's guilt within us. And if so, we will be punished according to what we've done against another person. And that punishment could include imprisonment. Imprisonment. And to be thrown, according to this part, to be thrown in prison in this verse could be literal or symbolic. Literal or symbolic. Literal or metaphorical. In its literal sense, in its literal sense, it means that a murderer belongs to prison, isn't it? Ang mamamatay tao daw ay dapat nakakulong. Yun po ang batas ng lupa. Amen? The law of the land. 
But metaphorically, metaphorically, anyone who doesn't reconcile with another becomes a prisoner of their own anger or unforgiveness. Amen? Paano po yun? If you have an enemy in the church, okay, we're talking about the church, there could be some sleepless nights. Okay? Be loss of appetite, stress and anxiety. All of a sudden, your world becomes smaller. Your world, your world becomes smaller and your time becomes shorter. What do I mean by that? You don't want to go to fellowship anymore. You just want to stay home. Oh, I don't want to go to the birthday party on my brother so and so. Why? Because maybe the person that I don't want to see will be there. When you, you're shrinking your world. About times become time becomes shorter. You attend the church and you rush home right away. Instead of staying another 30 minutes, you went home right away. You were home right away. Time becomes shorter. If not dealt properly and early, the anger can escalate to hatred. And the worst part, it can lead to murder. And it may not be physical murder, but in the mind, you are already, you're already murdering someone. You're cursing the person and wishing him her or dead. Her dead. You're wishing him bad. Sana masagasaan siya ng ng pison. You know, pag nasagasaan ka ng pison, you are dead. Ang bagal kaya ng pison. So, you, you could, you could, it could lead you to physical murder or verbal murder. Okay? Now, let me ask you this question. What is the difference between anger and danger? What is the difference between anger and danger? T. Huh? Anger is just letter D short of danger. Amen? You, you, you saw that? Maraming smart people. Okay. Okay. Anger leads us to danger of sinning against, against God when the devil starts to have his influence in our emotion. The devil is always waiting in our lowest, saddest, angriest moment when he infiltrates us. The, the, the devil is like a roaring lion waiting for the opportunity. So, the opportunity when we are at our lowest point, yung pinakamalungkot tayo, pinakagalit tayo, then He comes in to infiltrate us, to influence us. Did you know that anger is, anger is not always evil? Anger is not always evil. Getting angry is an emotion that God has included in the soul of a man. Remember Jesus Christ? He was angry when he toppled the tables of the money changer at the temple. And he, in, the, in that occasion, Jesus showed an emotion described as zeal for God's house. He, his anger was pure and completely justified because of his concern for God's holiness and worship. That means, to be angry is not a sin, but a prolonged anger could lead us to a dangerous territory. Anger can become, can lead us to danger. Paul said in Ephesians 4.26, Be angry and do not sin. Okay? And do not sleep in your anger. This is what you are prolonging your anger. If you prolong it, then it can lead you to the danger zone wherein you will commit more sin after that. Paul did not say avoid getting angry or suppress or ignore your anger. What the Word of God is telling us is to deal with our anger properly and timely. 
properly and timely. As it is always true, it is easier to make things right between two parties before a judge has to do so. And this is true on a practical level or on a spiritual level. On practical level, let me give an example. For example, sibling rivalry. Who among you here who have brothers and sisters not having a sibling rivalry? Sino pong hindi nag-aawi sa mga kapatid? Si Akemi at saka si Maxi, they never fight. I'm sure of that. They're good kids! They're pure kids! Sino pong pong? I'm sure Joyce and and JJ, they don't fight. Look at them. Very angelic. But let's talk about sibling rivalry. It's a common thing that happens between siblings. There's disagreement, there's fighting, there's jealousy, and many times the parents would say this, settle it among yourself or else you would be both grounded. Isn't it? That's always the case. If it is fighting for a toy between siblings, it would be easier if they settle it to, to themselves and make, um, make an agreement rather than the parents taking the toy from them, isn't it?